When you last saw this airplane, I had just finished building it. The He Wing T1 with the vertical takeoff VTOL kit. Uh, and I had done my initial test flight and everything went basically okay. We said thumbs up to the build and I <laughs> ended the video and it was a long video. So I was glad to put it in the can. But you know what I didn't do? I didn't actually like get any actual like real test flights with it. And I didn't continue with the setup. There's more to do to this airplane than just the very, very basic stuff I did in the initial setup. <laughs> basic. There's more to do and we're going to do it and that's what this video is about. We're going to put this guy out, we're going to actually do some shakeout flights and we're going to see what we can do to continue to make it better. I'm Joshua Bardwell and you're going to learn something today. Let's get up above the trees here. Forward flight. There we go. Boy, that transition is not very smooth, but it gets her done. Okay, let's see, how's my trim? My trim is not bad. My trim is, yeah, my roll trim is looking pretty good. I'm not pulling to one side. It's nose down just a little. Um, INF has an auto trim feature that I will be playing with to try to see if I can get it trimmed a little better. I wish I was getting more yaw authority off the differential mixing, but I don't seem to be. Uh, let's try, let's get a little more altitude. And let's see if we can try a loiter. Here's a loiter in three, two, one, loiter. Okay. And it should just circle. Looks decent. Um, let's try a return to home. My distance home is 225 meters. Let's do a return to home in three, two, one, return to home. En route to home. I don't, I'm not going to let it land, but I just want to see that it flies back home successfully. Yeah. 30 satellites. Jeez, man, that foil wrapper is so good. Loitering around home. Okay. It got home and it's loitering. It's not going to auto land. We'll put it back into angle mode. Uh, dare I put it into manual mode? Let's try it. Acro. Ooh. Oh. Well, that's not that's not bad at all. I kind of like that. I immediately like acro better than angle. Just the ability to same with drones. The ability to just set an angle, and then. Stick with it. So good. All right. Return to home. We'll bring her in uh, and see what else we can mess with. Everything's checking out great. It's flying beautifully. Loitering around home. So now we will transition back to multi-rotor. That transition back to multi-rotor is pretty smooth. Oh, we're still in acro mode. Holy shit. Okay, I can do this. Let's just bring it in slowly. Descend slowly. It's really bumpy in acro mode, but it is flying just fine. Well, I can tell you one mistake I've made is that I spec'd that lithium ion battery for multi for the plane, which doesn't pull a lot of current but in multi-rotor mode, it does not have the C rating. The battery is really struggling to keep up. Um, let's see what else we can play with. The first thing I wanna do is go to the configuration tab 
and there's an option here, continuously trim servos on fixed wing. So you probably don't need me to explain what trim is on an airplane. It's if the airplane is like pulling to the left or pulling to the right, if it's a little nose heavy and you're having to kind of constantly pull back on the elevator, then you just trim that out so the airplane is doing that automatically. Um, we set our servos to neutral positions, but that doesn't necessarily mean when the aircraft is in flight, it's, that means it's gonna fly flat and level. Our aircraft kind of is flying flat and level, but still, trimming could make it fly better. And if we've got a flight controller, then it's better to tr let the flight controller trim the aircraft than to kind of put the trim into the hand controller. Now, INAV does have an aux mode. Uh, it's in here somewhere, which is the auto trim aux mode. And when you enable that aux mode, what it does is it says, okay, you presumably are trying to fly flat and level. If you are constantly putting in a little bit of back elevator or a little bit of right roll, I will detect that the aircraft isn't doing what it's supposed to do and I will automatically trim it out to fix that. In order for this to work, you need a GPS so that it knows the aircraft's position relative to what it, so it knows what it's doing versus what you're trying to tell it to do. Um, but obviously we have a GPS and if you're flying INAV, you probably do as well. Uh, rather than go in here and try and activate it, there's another function though, that I showed you just a minute ago, continuously trim servos on fixing. And basically what this does is just the whole time you're flying, as long as you're mostly flying flat and level, it will just continuously go, hey, is everything okay? Do I need to tweak the trim a little bit? And it's just constantly doing that in the background. And I think most of the time that's, that's probably just worth having on. You know, I'm actually not sure this is gonna affect me at all because I'm only flying in acro and angle mode. And both acro and angle modes are stabilized. Even in acro mode, we still have like a maximum roll rate. There's still a paid controller. It's still trying to kind of tweak the aircraft and keep it flying straight and level. It just doesn't auto level back out again when I center the stick. This would really only come into play if I was flying in full manual mode where I have direct control of the control surfaces. N nevertheless, I, I kind of feel like having it on. So we're gonna turn it on. Fail safe. Uh, I feel like fail safe set to return to home is the correct thing to do now that we've verified that return to home is working. The other thing I wanna do is set up auto launch. Um, and the way auto launch, well, I'll take you outside and I'll show you how auto launch works. But in order to set up auto launch, we can either go to the modes tab and set up an auto launch flight mode, which I think makes sense because sometimes we'll take off in multi-rotor mode and auto launch won't apply. And I'm not actually sure exactly how those interactions occur, but we want nav launch, that's auto launch. That's gonna be, I know what switch that is. And there we go, I believe that's what we want. Um, and then to actually use it, we'll go outside and I'll show you how it's used. Here are the steps for an auto launch. Pay close attention because uh, the plane is going to arm itself at some point and the motors are gonna to go to full. And if you are not aware of exactly when that's gonna happen, you could get cut up, okay. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna enable auto launch by pressing in the auto launch switch. And there doesn't seem to be any indication like in the goggles that that has happened. So you just have to guess trust that. Throttle down and then we're gonna arm. And at this point, if auto launch is not enabled, the motors, well, nothing will happen until you raise the throttle. So we should be good to go. So I'm gonna hit the arm switch now with the throttle down. And now it begins beeping and you can see it says, raise the throttle auto launch. Hold on, let me disarm real quick so it's not beeping. Once I raise the throttle to full, it will be ready to auto launch. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shake the plane. Now you can just toss the plane and that toss could be vigorous enough that it goes to full throttle and it begins flying away. But if it isn't vigorous enough, then the plane will just kind of bleh. So what a lot of people do is they shake the plane, it starts to, uh, goes to full throttle and then they release it and it does the launch. And I'm gonna hope it clears these trees. And if not, it's gonna be on video and be very exciting. Um, during the launch, you can take over with the sticks. So if it looks like it's gonna hit the trees, I'm gonna try flying at line of sight, which will be its own special little form of adventure. Raise throttle to full and... Oh, that works real good. Uh, 40 degrees is a lot, all right. 
Okay, I'm in goggles and it should, now it's just flying away. So I will now take control and fly it back to me. Ha <laughs> ha, my heart is racing. That was so exciting. Where is home? Is that my house? That doesn't look like my house. Oh, I see where I am. Okay, great. So we will drop it in here, try and lose some speed. No, that was a disarm. Why will you not rearm? Oh God, I disarmed, fuck. That was a disarm that was not a mode switch. Well, like I said, at least I got it on video. No apparent harm done. We'll, uh, we'll put her back together and see if she still flies uh, in just a second. Um, yeah, no, seems, seems okay. Uh, what could we have done to avoid this situation? Um, number one, if you're gonna do the auto launch switch, then after you launch, you have to take it out of auto launch. Otherwise, if you <laughs> accidentally flip the disarm switch in midair, you won't be able to rearm. By the way, I don't know if you caught the replay, but I did put the throttle down the second time I tried to arm, and then I was just completely mystified. Um, but credit for that, I think. Uh, they always say that a good pilot never stops flying the plane. They keep flying the plane all the way into the ground, and I, uh, I will say that I feel like I lived up to that. Me and, and Captain Sully, right? Miracle on the Hudson, not quite the same. The other thing we could do is there's a setting which just always activates auto launch automatically the first, you know, and so then you just arm, raise throttle and go. And the problem with that would be if it didn't work in VTOL mode, if it messed up VTOL mode, and that's kind of what I'm curious about. But first let's just put it back together and just see if it's completely borked. I don't think it was. That was a pretty mild crash as crashes go, to be honest. Uh, okay. I like how the sort of controlled demolition, you know, the wings pop off in a crash and that uh, seems to go a fair way towards preventing actual damage. It's kind of cool. So will it arm in multi-rotor mode? I don't have goggles. If I enable, okay, so I'm gonna enable auto launch. That shouldn't do anything in multi-rotor mode. Let's find out. No. So multi-rotor mode ignores auto launch. And so the thing to do, I think, is to enable auto launch all the time uh, so that then if you're in plane mode, you'll just auto launch it. Because why not? You're going to manually launch it in plane mode. Or you just switch it to multi-rotor and then take off the normal way. And then you never have to, well, number one, you don't give up an aux switch. You never have to remember to push the switch in. And more importantly, you never have to remember to push the switch out. But um, do be safe. Once you've armed and the throttle's up, as soon as you shake the plane, it's gonna go to full throttle. So like that could be dangerous. The one other thing I wanna tell you before we end this video is what you should do, in my opinion, is arm and then activate nav mode. In fact, let's do that. We got a no sun at all, but let's, let's do that so you can see it happen. Arm, raise the throttle, okay. So now that we're in auto launch, I'm gonna, <sighs> Activate loiter. You have to activate loiter after you arm because it won't arm in GPS nav mode. Arm, nav, throttle up. Okay, so now it should get to 50 meters and begin to loiter. Perfect, yeah. Perfect, and now it's just gonna loiter until I take over. All right, all right. I'm trying to die here, trying to crash, trying to destroy this freaking thing, but somehow it has survived and I have survived too. This video is one of a playlist. I'll put a card to the playlist on screen. If you enjoyed this content, if you learned from this content, join my Patreon, because I'll put my Patreon in the video description. And uh, I'm gonna land this plane before I destroy it. <laughs> you want to see me build this? Want to see me set it up? You want to follow in my uh, footsteps? <laughs> or maybe not. <laughs> There's a playlist in the video description. I got a full build big guide for this plane and uh, more fun stuff that I'm going to do with it, whatever the hell that might be. I think I'll try waypoints next. That's going to do it for today. See you in the next one.